What's up, besties? Welcome back to another episode of I Am Besties. I am your host, Vanessa. What's Gucci? I'm Isis. And it's Steph. Woo! We're all motherfucking back. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, you guys, that I was gone for the past two weeks. Oh, okay. <laughs> not the, but I missed it. Not not those. Not the, the studio ghost? falling apart. I know. I, what's going on? Well, you didn't see that? Yeah, that yeah. the whole thing just fell. Yeah, yeah, I saw. I'm like, whoa. If that's not a sign that we need a new studio, then I don't know what yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> Please donate the link down below. Hey, sign up to our Patreon. Send in a tip. A hey, up your tier. Please. Up your tear. I'm hey. begging you. Hey, I do want to start this episode with saying, and well, I don't know to any of y'all, but anyways, happy Pride Month. I'm like, I don't think that's what I'm, I'm like. Let me find out you're trying to come I'm out. I'm like, are coming out. Because actually, my friends are coming out. Uh, and me, I literally, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, don't throw our secret in the bus. Uh, no, fine. I want to say happy Pride Month. I saw this quote. Um, well, I saw this. Someone share this experience. Uh, Viola Davis said, a friend sent me a quote. Queer people don't grow up as ourselves. We grow up as a version of ourselves to sacrifice authenticity, to minimize humiliation and prejudice. The massive task of our adult lives is to unpick which parts of ourselves are truly us and which parts are created to protect us. So I really want to send all love to all my LGBTQ plus a queer folk out there, especially those trans, uh, especially trans people, because, you know, I think. We are in a time that we're definitely being more progressive in terms of what we're accepting, but people still constantly live their lives, you know, in a status quo. So mm-hmm. happy Pride Month to those who are out and who are those who are on their journey. Yeah. Happy Pride Month, everyone. It's crazy, too, because like you said, like we're we are living in a progressive time, but I still seem to have conversations with like men where they're like. Oh, you know, I didn't want to take my kids here because two guys were kissing or blah, blah, blah. And I'm always like, mm, you're talking to the wrong person, bitch. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't want to have this conversation with yeah. you. Because right? it's usually with very close-minded, you know, men. Yeah. At some point, I, I, my best friend really taught me, like, you don't need, not everyone deserves a combo. Yeah, 100%. Um, have you been, Vanessa? The people missed you. I've been good. I've just been living life, you know, just... Buddha, is that why you're in pink? Huh? Is that why you're in pink? Um, no, I just kind of felt, you know, like wearing a little dress today. I I don't know why I've been like in a cowgirl boot. Um, whoa, oh. my bad. I, I like took that word from you. Um, I've been what? like in a cowgirl boot like oh, kick lately, where like mm-hmm. I just I can't take them off. I'm they literally cute. I ran errands yesterday in my boots. <laughs> no, they're She's cute. A cowgirl. I'm a cowgirl now. You know what's funny? Cause like it it's. I feel like my man literally, he's mixed. He's not Latino, but he wears his cowboy boots. You're lying. And it's, and it's like, bro, I'm Latina, and I don't even do that. That's and hilarious. I just think it's so cute. Like, it's so funny. So, like, I just feel like it ripped off on me. So, I'm like, I love my boots. Cute. He, he said it's okay. He's like, honestly, this color's for you. You think so? Yeah. Are you Thank like you. a summer, like, what is it, like a, a warm summer or what, cool summer? What does that mean? Like your color palette? I don't know. Do you know your color palette? I don't know mine. I I presume mine, but I don't know mine officially. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to use the color, like the filter, the filter on TikTok, but I don't know why. I'm scared because what if it's a color I like to wear Dude. and then I realize that it looks like shit on me? Yeah, same. That's why I stay away from those. I'm like, I like what I like. <laughs> no, that color looks really pretty. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. So you're Buddha. I think so because people told me too that I was wearing like a lavender purple color the other day mm. too, and someone told me that that color looked really nice on me too. I've been told that um, what's that other color? Um, it's not yellow. It's like a mustard. Like mustard. Oh, I love mustard. Someone told me that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone told me that mustard looks really nice on me too. I could see mustard looking nice yeah. on you. Yeah. Do they have like those? Because you know how they have like the salons where you can go and like. Well, I've only seen it in like Asian countries, unfortunately. Yeah. Where like they go and like they'll do the little. Yeah. Like color test on you, but it's like oh, a whole experience. But I don't okay. know if they have that here in California. I'm sure some Maybe. Bitch. I'm pretty sure. Well, it's LA. drop them, bitch, because I do sometimes wear shit and I'm like, why the fuck do I look like I just came out of the fucking casket? Oh, hell no. <laughs> I'm dead. I, I couldn't see that. Really? But you know what? I also feel like, oh, guys, I'm like desperate for Botox right now. What? What? Like, I just feel like I have been unhappy with my face and I'm like, I need, like, I feel like I'm. 
It's Where like are the crazy. wrinkles uh, in your that's face? That's insane. I'm not going to move my face too much. Zero. But it's my forehead. <laughs> I'm like, are the wrinkles in the room with those? No, literally. Like, <laughs> literally, bitch, I need like, Botox. Um, I don't see any. But it's like one of those things where like you know, you know you what know, I mean? Yeah. Like nobody knows but you. So I guess I, I don't know. Yeah. Thank you guys. <laughs> Do you hey. feel like, you know, your hair, that like that mm. change is making you more picky about your face? Because you're maybe not, like, entirely happy with your hair? No, because I do like that. Like, I feel like because I like my hair so much, I've been trying to, I guess, do my makeup. And when I do my makeup, since I'm wearing more of it, I can kind of tell, like, the... No, obviously, I know I'm not wrinkly, but I can see the wrinkles that I didn't see when I was freshly, you know, Botoxed up. Mm. So it's just more like I'm like, okay, I'm ready for my for my That's fix. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I get it. I, res- I respect it. Yeah. But I do love my hair. I just, you know what I hate? I hate when I can see the root. But I had left that purposely so I wouldn't have to keep dyeing my hair, like just kind of let yeah. this grow out. Oh, but okay. I'm really like going a little nuts about it. Because I want to I want to put it up, but it looks real. like I, my, I feel like my root is so dark. Oh, and I okay. hate that. I want to be a cute summer. But I feel like it looks like that's the point. Like it looks like the root is intense. It doesn't like if you were to pull your hair up, I'd be like, oh, that's part of the hairstyle. It it is, but I changed my mind. <laughs> like now I'm like, fuck that. I want a highlight. <laughs> but it is what it is. I'm not gonna touch my hair anymore. I'm gonna leave it alone. I was gonna tell you, you should get bangs, but I'm like, you're to get bitch. Bangs. I literally was like, maybe I need to cut my bang. I swear no, to God. And no. I was like, no, that's enough. Don't do it, that's please. enough. Don't do it, mama. Yeah, I'm going to look like a little fucking weird like, Don't girl. do it to yourself. <laughs> no. Don't do it. I thought about it. I'm like, mm, I'm not going to suggest that. Never no, mind. no. I'm going to let them back. grow a little bit more. And then I'm going to get like clip and extensions. Like I have like curly hair extensions. So mm-hmm. I'll probably start doing that. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's okay, guys. I'm not going to fuck with myself no more. Well, I mean like Botox and shit. But what made you want to cut your hair? I was it was like really damaged and like when oh, it's damaged okay. it doesn't curl like it was like curly like this and then the ends were straight got so it, it. Looked stupid got it and I was tired of putting heat on it because it was just I don't know I was just like over it so I was like uh I'm, I want to go back like on my curly hair journey but if I didn't cut it to this length it was going to take me a lot longer mm. so I was just like mm, I'm gonna cut it it's gonna grow anyways mm. but I feel like I, I really do feel lighter yeah i feel lighter yeah that's good and it's nice and it's finally like i mean i just cut it but it's growing now to a length where i can i can put it up mm-hmm, where it's so manageable it's nice. yeah, yeah yeah someone was mad in the comments they're like i'm gonna leave my dead hair long oh, yeah and i was like calm down girl i didn't say fucking chop it off i just said yeah. i'm gonna judge you no, <laughs> she's not um it's okay babe we all talking about judging how do you guys oh. feel about Nicki minaj being arrested oh. tell spill the tea about that because i don't i feel like you know more details than me I did watch the 59 second clip. Yeah. Which she went live. So she was in Amsterdam. She had just left, I think, another country where weed is legal. And so she was traveling with her entourage and landed in Amsterdam. And yes, though weed is decriminalized in um, Amsterdam, talking in terms of like TSA and flying, the definition of trafficking is to like, export import yeah right so you're not allowed to like legally bring weed into amsterdam into i don't think any government okay and so she thought oh because it's legal there i could just fly in and i won't get it damn she had a shit ton of it and i don't know what was the quantity amount but she did say must have been something it was, it was something yeah and then she was saying oh my, my security guard here he's the one who said he got it so like why can't you guys just take him <laughs> I, I think that's what she said. Like, not in that word, but she was just she's saying, like, um, who's really at She's like, here? he no. already said that it's his. Like, so what? Like, and like they what? still rest. And they were her? being like really nice and kind. And I guess later she was saying, oh, they were being racist. And I'm like, uh, no, you're literally transporting drugs. If you were like, you know, any other race, they still would have locked you up. Crazy. So now y'all know. And per and first of all, why are you buying shit when you could just buy shit there? Yeah. And I also feel like sometimes it's common sense. Right. Yeah. Because that, especially like like even like if you fly from here to another state, like weed's not legally federally, so you still can yeah. like oh, yeah. sure. put it in your fucking luggage. I know people that do Tell that to the Stizzy in my makeup bag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on that's different. That doesn't count. I'm like, oh it's not a flower, it's literally a device. <laughs> <laughs> It's so weird that they let those on the plane though, and you're not allowed to smoke it on the plane. Like, yeah. then why do why can I put it up here? Yeah, beats me. That. I know someone who who smoked in the <laughs> in the airplane oh like God. bathroom. No, as long as they don't post it on social media, they won't get on the no. Well, they, yeah, they got caught, no. and, but they um 
nothing happened. I think they just gave him like a warning. But they were about, I don't, I'm not sure because it was like a friend of a friend. Yeah. Um, just lie, just make it up. I know who it is. Like, I know them personally. <laughs> I just, somebody else told me. Yeah. You're like, I can't ask them, like, so what happened? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Call them right now. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I don't even have their number. Never mind. Yeah. I, I saw on TikTok. Guys, it, wait, no, go for it. It's always so strange, like, when someone, like you said, a friend of a friend, like, you maybe know of them, but you don't know them, and you know, like, cheese me about them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. You're like, mm, I know this about you. That's crazy. <laughs> You're like, dude, how have you been? Oh, no, no, just, you know, go ahead. Didn't you, didn't you get a DUI lesson? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Like, well, drop their what? name, drop their name. How do you know? I kind of, okay, not to be weird, but I kind of like knowing when people have DUIs. Because <laughs> I'm like, mm, how that happen? Where'd it yeah. go? Down. What were you doing? No, honestly, by the grace of God, I don't have one. I don't drink and drive anymore, but back in my day, I should have gotten one. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely have done that, like, when I was younger. Yeah, yeah, younger, was younger. Very dumb. Very young. Very young, young very dumb. dumb. I was never, like, blasted, but still, like, nowadays, I'm just like, I'm, I really try to be careful. Yeah, there was a point where I would, like, drive with, like, and a hand over an eye because I was seeing double, so I was no like, way, I had to drive like lie. this. Yeah, bitch, it was bad. Oh my god, it happened You're like brave. twice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not You're brave. I'm brave. fucking stupid. Oh my god. Don't do that, you guys. Don't please don't, don't do, do that. that. No, please literally. close I'm not... both eyes and put it no, in part. <laughs> <laughs> Get it over, bitch. Oh no, so I'm not glamorizing drunk driving. That shit was whack as fuck. I literally was young and dumb, but oh literally, I it think was... back on it and I'm like, how, Lord, like. Knock on wood. I've never even gotten pulled over. Like, yeah. Wow. Y'all knock on wood because... Knock on wood, <laughs> bitch, because no, I dude, swear to God. I went to the new club in Riverside, the Riv. Oh, oh how was it? That shit's garbage. Oh, Like, uh, garbage. Is it too packed? It's too packed. It's too oh. hot. And the music was ass when we Ooh. went. And it was supposed to be like 2000s night and mm. like 90s, 2000s. During the week or what? No, it was on... Friday. They didn't put on Nelly. Oh. No, they were just playing like weird fucking mixes and then like pretty modern like music. Mm, And I was like, bitch, what is this? But aside of that, honestly, it's insane to me how drunk people get. Like to the point where I don't think I ever, even when I was drinking excessively, I don't think I ever got that drunk as I saw like that many girls. You never been to Riverside County? <laughs> but like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like back then it wasn't like, it was to get fucked up, but people were dancing and people were having yeah. a good time. Like now people don't, I mean, they dance, but it's not. The same. Yeah. There's no like, I don't know, welcoming environment, I guess. Everyone's in their own shit and then everyone's getting too fucked up. All the guys want to fight. <sighs> like, it was just a really weird energy there. I, I did not like it. I was very disappointed. But I also think maybe it's just not for me anymore. Because mm. to me, the club, not all of them, but if the club's not a vibe, then you kind of got to get drunk or else it's fucking whack. Yeah. Did you get drunk? No. Mm. That's why I was like, mm. It's fucking whack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you should have gone drunk. Well, I don't really. That probably would have helped. A little bit. That, but that's what I'm saying. Like, if I have to have get drunk to have fun, then it's probably not fun here. Yeah, yeah that's I agree. Also true. You know what I, I mean? Agree, I agree. I agree. Like, I, drinking does make it more. Yeah, fun. like if the music was good, then I wouldn't have needed the alcohol because yeah. I would have just been vibing with the music. But it wasn't even good enough to it wasn't do that. Even that down. Yeah, it was fucking weird. If you were there and you said it was fun, you're lying. Down, yeah, down. I haven't gone because it looks like way too packed every time someone posts it. I'm like, uh, I was, it's like super I'd rather packed not. in there. Yeah, it looks like really packed. Maybe it'll die out soon because it's like it's a brand new club, so people are like, you know, trying to check it out. Mm. But I just, uh, I don't like too crowded places. Like, yeah. yeah do you think? Do you think club sections killed the club? No, I like them. <laughs> so I, she's part of the reason no it's it's it, i like it because like i said i don't like the crowdedness so when you have yeah. your section like you're not crowded you have like your area that's what, true. What, what, like what what don't you like about them i mean i do enjoy sections but i think if when people go out to a club and they think oh i need to get a section oh okay. i feel like also let's be honest when you're on a section either you're dancing on top of the couches <laughs> Or you're just like chilling, posted up. Let's be yeah, real. unless yeah. like unless you got a little table in the way. Yeah, that's, but you're dancing on the couches if you don't want to leave your section. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's just like you can only do so much in your heels without you got taking them off, so you don't poke a hole through the section, yeah. you know, like through the couches. You know, so yeah. I just feel like. I, I love being on the dance floor and I love dancing. Like, I love moving around. Dancing, no, same, you know? same. That's same. the only thing that I say is a con when you got a table. Like, you got to be on the dancing on the couches. Yeah. 
No, I see that. I see that for sure, for sure. You know what I think is funny though? The guys that like go and get a section, like waiting for like the girls, girls to come. Yeah, the girls to come. <laughs> okay. And they always, do. Like, two weirdos. Yeah, and they always fucking do. I'm like, yeah, girl, you know what? You have no fucking standards. No, you That's do. So and funny. me talking shit when I'm like, I'm going to Vegas next week and we're getting. <laughs> 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 That's hey, different. That's that part of the I'm thinking about that right now. I'm like, this is girl. I'm like, look. It's part of the problem, but 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 let's let's be honest. That's the truth, though. But you can if you get a section, though. I feel like it's good because you can always like go and like back. dance and yeah. come back. You know, you can sit, take a break. You know, sit down with your homegirls and talk and laugh. Because I feel like when I I'm in a section, it's because like like you know my friends and like we talk. We we might dance a little bit there, but we we normally go out to the dance floor yeah. and dance, and then like we come, we take a seat. We have like a and place to leave break. our stuff yeah. if our feet hurt, whatever yeah. we can sit. I feel like that's why I like it, you know. Yeah. But um, but yeah. I don't know. And I feel like well, I feel like clubbing mostly I did it in Mexico too, and Mexico's more like everyone has their kind of little section. Oh, that's how it is. Yeah, a yeah. lot of the times like, there's like, like tables and stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, so it's cool too for that because I low key hate going to the club and not taking a jacket because I'm either gonna have to be carrying it or wearing it and it's too yeah. fucking hot in there. Yeah. But I'm gonna be cold when I leave or when I'm getting there. Like, you know, I wanna dress like a hoochie mama and like cover up too, like and leave my yeah. jacket somewhere. So I kinda do like it for that reason too. You're right. Yeah, yeah no, actually you guys are totally right. <laughs> I mean, like I said, I'm not against them. I'm just like realistically, because not like yeah. and, and there's some clubs like in Vegas. There's this fucking club I hate going to. I think it's called like Zurich. Zurich. It's literally the tiniest club. And the dance floor is maybe this section. No, you're lying. And the rest of it is all all tables. Granted, you do actually have space in those areas to dance. Okay. But it's literally the dance floor is this big. So you have to get a table. Well, yeah, but then you're totally isolated. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. but then you're totally isolated. Like you're literally probably like how you're describing, like in your own little cube. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's no community. There's no dance community. community. It's just like everyone they're getting fucked Mm -hmm. up and like for themselves. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. I just like to take. I just like getting a table because like all the alcohol. Like I don't have to worry about leaving, getting in line. Like that's 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 why I love. That's why I love. I'm like you're right. I'm sorry. Bottle service sections for me. I love the sections for the bottle service. Yeah. You know, because then I'm like, you're totally right. In some places, they are there is space where you can have your own space and dance. Like, if you're by the DJ booth, I feel like, yeah, typically you can dance more. Yeah. But anyways. Not us talking about this when we're, like, thinking about cutting back. Are you guys, have you guys been cutting back? I mean, I don't really drink anymore. Yeah, I'll either. do it, like, every now and then, but it's not, yeah. like... Not really. I was going to stop completely, but I realized I just, I'm going to cut back instead of cutting it out because it's summertime. Mm. And dude, I already, there's a of lot course. of fun things coming up. <laughs> I'm like, it's going to be impossible. Why am I even going to set myself up for failure? Yeah. Right. I'm just going to cut back. What does cut back mean to you? Well, like, for example, well, yesterday. Tell us, tell us how much you're drinking and then yeah. how, how much, much I used to. Back. Okay. Right. What was your regular? <laughs> my Pre cut reg- back. My regular would definitely, I would have like at least like five mixed drinks. And like maybe like six shots. Damn. On a, yeah. on in one week or one day? No, like on a night out. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot. I, I drink a lot. I drink like a man. Yeah, it was a lot. Hey. No, what's up, what's up, baby? <laughs> no, but um, oh I would hydrate in between. You know, I drink my water, but I just I do drink a lot. Yeah. So, but now cutting back, like yesterday, I went to brunch and I didn't do mimosas. I just had two shots, but we were there for three hours. <laughs> We were there for three hours, cut back, so cut it, back, it back. literally one like per hour. three hours, so one hour and a half. So I was like, okay. <laughs> oh, you did two shots. Two shots oh. in the three hours that I was there, and that's oh, it. And, wow. I, and I and I sat on like my sparkling water with lime. Wow. And then after that, we went to Classy. I know. And then after we went to like a day club, and I had I did have like four shots there, but I was there from like four to nine. Yeah. So that was like a big cutback for me because I wasn't having mixed drinks. I just had like a couple shots and I was good. I did. I felt a buzz, but obviously compared to fucking five mixed drinks and six mm-hmm. shots, it yeah. wasn't. It didn't compare. It so maybe it's not cutting back. It's pacing yourself. Yeah, pacing myself, drinking my water. Oh, and then also like my man ordered me food, so I ate like pizza and wings. Oh, okay. So I was like eating food too. So I was like, you know, yeah, that's so was, good. Yeah. So, but definitely, I did cut back though. Like that, I feel like how much was that like four or five like six shots in the whole day and i get it i get it Come on. <laughs> I, mean, like, I get it I'm like, i swear carry to one <laughs> i carry the one. Oh, oh my god 
<laughs> no, so to me, it's cutting back. So I'm like, okay. And and I, and the goal is to keep cutting back. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. I'm not going to go over that. I yeah. just feel like, I like even with a, if I have like three, I get a slight hangover. And really? I hate that. Yeah, no. like now I just, my body doesn't handle it well that I'm like, oh it's really not worth and like, it's no. so healthy. For me, yeah. I just literally just, it's the sugar for me. That's why I literally don't even have, like, when I, I stick do, to shots. Yeah. And even when I do drink, drink mixed drinks, it's literally just tequila sodas with mm. lime. That's it. I cut out the sugar completely. Um, and I feel like as long as I don't mix, I'm, I don't feel hungover. Just tired, but not hungover. I'm too old for that shit. It's because I'm older than you. Girl, <laughs> oh, my God. This bitch fucking works out every day, eats healthy. Literally. Does it, like, all right, yeah, you, you, your age is the problem, sure. Guys, it's hard. Because I miss the feeling of being drunk. Yeah. Like, I miss getting fucked up and being... But you know what? I'm such a bad drunk now, too, that it's not even, like, oh, bad I'm drunk. Bad in what sense? Like, I'm so over emotional and i'm too mm. like i'm too much like i'm crying yeah like i'll cry i'll mm. feel like extremely like like guilty over yeah. random shit Got it. then i'll like be mean or something mm. so it. i'm just like not a good drunk anyways so. i've noticed that lately too that i mm. i try to no i'm not like that but i will avoid drinking if i know something's been like on my mind mm. heavy like if i've been like let's say for example i'm like upset with my sister and like there's just something that i've been wanting to tell her but i've just been keeping it in mm -hmm. i know not to get drunk around her because i will mm -hmm. say it yeah and you don't you never say it kindly either you no, just like let it just out blurt however, it out yeah. and it's just like yeah <laughs> whatever thought yeah. you get but and i feel like it's mostly that too that i'm like i've already done and said things that i just don't want to be doing anyways so like i'm cool with never drinking again but i think it's because i'm so okay with like just smoking like smoking would never yeah. do that to me. I miss smoking. Yeah, like I was. I keep thinking about that all the time. Like when I smoke, I never drink. I went years without drinking because I was always smoking. I just smoked. Like, and I loved too that I wouldn't smoke even out in public because that was never my thing. I, I'm, I'm, I wasn't able to smoke oh. in public. I was the type I'd be out. I'd have a good time with my friends. Uh, maybe one drink but literally that was the most mm -hmm. like i would not drink and i would come home and i would be so excited because i was like oh i'm gonna pack my bowls or i'm gonna smoke my two i would smoke like two jays a night one day in the morning sometimes so you have excess i problems. know i'm like damn I, girl yeah, pace yourself no literally dude i would smoke a lot like but yeah. damn the amount of money i save though yeah not buying weed is crazy, That's crazy. easy in a month mm, let's not say <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't know i don't know i, I did some questionable things for some for you nah imagine <laughs> no i know thankfully right now i'm smoking weed that gets me really high <laughs> so i don't have to spend that much you know what i mean like yeah. i'll just like smoke a little bit oh, and that's good chill not good. having a high tolerance yeah yeah but i don't know why hey. but you know what I, I think i smoke like one a day i'll smoke like a little bit before the gym and then i'll smoke at night yeah that's, that's like good. one full one but that's the other good. day i left it outside and tell me why a worm when? went into my little joint Ooh, i was very upset he was like, <laughs> he's like i need this shit i know he probably had diarrhea no. <laughs> i think oh it got God. stuck in there that I was one like, turned no into a way. moth or some shit yeah. Yeah. his, mat, his mind wings. expanded yeah, he definitely got some wings that flew for sure he's like, am i just a worm <laughs> would you what? love me if i was a worm <laughs> babe he went home babe if i turn into a human would you still be with me <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Happy birthday, Salud! Woo! Salud turns three. And they're celebrating with 20% off site-wide. Now's the chance to try my favorite flavors like peach, mango chili, mandarina, jamaica, and so many more. Cheers, Cheers to hell. hell! It's because, dude, I... Okay, I watched a documentary today. Have you guys seen it? It's um, called... Dancing with the devil. With the devil. Like no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The name I think it's really familiar. Oh my gosh, it's what crazy. is it crazy. It's about a cult that um this like guy he he had this religion. I can't remember what it's called. Sh Shen something Shen, but he pretty much got like all these TikTok dancers to join his cult, and I know you guys have seen their videos, like because even when I saw them, I was like, "Fuck, this looks TikTok familiar." TikTok dancers. TikTok so dancers. This is recent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like maybe like last year or something what? like that. The let me see. Colts on TikTok. The cult oh, is yeah, called. I remember the little preview now. They're like dancing with the devil. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, isn't that dancing in the shower? <laughs> <laughs> Hi Becky G. I can't. I knew she was part of some shit, bro. I knew she was part of some shit. Oh Let me my find God. a remix. 
That's, that's what it says when you reverse, hey, when you reverse, when you reverse, reverse the song. <laughs> that's what that's it a says. Pokemon song. Hey, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no, bro, this shit's crazy. Oh, the, okay, the church is called <laughs> Shek- Shekinah. Huh? Shekinah Church. But the leader yeah. of that church, so he got all these TikTokers and he was like, hey, you know, um, he pretty much started like preaching the word of God and they. I guess he was like very enticing. So he started telling them like, you know, um, like join, uh, like I'm going to start a management company. Like you guys should join. And pretty much like he started taking over their lives in that sense. But it's so recent that it's kind of scary. Wow. And the documentary is pretty much um, the this family, the it's like the parents and a sister. And I guess that sister and her older sister used to do videos together. So they were like viral on TikTok and they would dance together. And they got a manager, which was um, some guy, his name was James. And then he started dating the older sister. So James is the one who kind of had the connection with the cult leader because his son was also like part of the TikTok community. And I guess there's like a bunch of TikTokers that ended up going to live with him. And at first it was just like, you know, like, um, just create content. Like here's like a video editor. Here's like a video videographer, like whatever you need, just create content. So the documentary starts with them kind of talking about that. Like it really was at first just you know us hanging out like being friends and making content but the guy slowly obviously started making them cut off their families and pretty much telling them like to truly to truly give yourself to god you have to die for the people you love so you have to die to the people you love because that's what jesus did like that's the ultimate sacrifice and the documentary just kind of i haven't finished it i'm on the last episode but it just follows like the sister and the parents like connecting with other people that have been other parents and families that that had been happening to with their yeah with their like um children and all that and but it's hard because you really can't make a case because cults aren't illegal which i didn't Mm. know they're not illegal because it's like a religious practice but so right now they're trying to kind of get him through like in a criminal they're trying to put press criminal charges on him because of course he was out here like raping women and stuff or oh, like wow. making them do like sexual favors for him and stuff oh, wow. so that's the part of the docu- documentary i'm in um their management thing is called 7m or something like that but it's really crazy i i think you guys should watch it it's really really insane because as an adult you're always like i feel like it's like a question most people have for themselves like how do you get nicole yeah like how do you get a nicole or would i be drawn to a cult yeah so they say people who think that they're least susceptible to get drawn into a cult are the most susceptible to really get. yeah because you're so skeptical of it it just makes you like more likely to fall into it yeah i'm oh, sure wow. there's deeper research but that was just a very high level headline do you guys think <laughs> you would be able to like, you guys think you'd be dragged into a cult? If Beyonce told Fuck me right no. now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wait, but that's Beyonce. That's, that's, that's Beyonce. Beyonce. Let's she not didn't say. specify. Like, yeah. The beehive, is that not a cult? No, but... I kind of. I, I don't know. I don't think so. Only because... Why do I have to follow you? Like, I feel like I'm too alpha leader. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, okay. Oh, you're, oh, you're God? Yeah. She's like, I'm like, you're God? Oh. That, I love God. <laughs> oh, What's wrong with you? That's how I feel too. Like if a man was like massaging me, I'd be like, ew. Yeah, no, no, I don't want to do that. But it, I mean, like, it's at that gift. Mine first. <laughs> <laughs> you become the leader? <laughs> Take over. Oh, maybe maybe that should have been our question. Could we be leaders of a cult? Bessie's comment which cult you guys would join. <laughs> Dude, we're actually having a meeting this Wednesday. We're having a meeting. Let us know. Well, she's Wednesday. I'm Tuesday. Anyway. <laughs> Dude, Loki, I feel like I would be able to be a cult leader. Like if, like if I had to, like if somebody just put me in the position, mm-hmm. I just, I just feel like I could definitely be bossy. You could step up. Yeah, I feel like I'd be able to step up to the plate. How would you entice people? I'd be like, bro, all your dreams are gonna come true. <laughs> I don't know how, but they, they will. I promise. I'm sold. That's it. That's all, that's all you She's need. like, I just got that riz. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'm really charismatic. Right. I'm gonna whisper sweet nothings in their ears. I'm like, got this. I feel like I, I, I could definitely join a cult. I don't think I could lead a cult. Mm. You could join a cult. I would join. That's a cult. crazy. I feel like I could see you in a cult. Thank you. I don't know <laughs> why. What kind? Um, like those, like fucking nature cults like. oh like a communion yeah oh, a commune kind of like that i like that okay. one i like that one yeah maybe like, 
But you know, yeah, it starts would. off nice, and then they have us doing like labor and stuff, <gasps> and then they never let you leave. Yeah, the and then compound. I'm like, help, guys. Yeah, yeah. Damn. And then next thing you know, we're gonna get a message at three in the morning from a random number, like, guys, help. It's Please. Stephanie. Yeah, I'm like, bitch, I haven't seen you in five years. I'm like, Stephanie, who? Which- <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, which one? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> But do you, like, ever think of that, too? Like, if anything were to happen to us, it's kind of crazy because, like, people would notice, like, our, our, like, even the fact that you weren't here for two weeks, you know, people were like, where's Vanessa? Like, how, like, anything that happens to us is going to be so public because people are going to, like, are going to notice our missing. Are we so famous? We're okay, so we're not famous, famous we're or whatever. So famous. We got a big old uh, digital pr- footprint, though. Hey, no, we yeah. really fucking do. <laughs> Dude, honestly, having a big digital footprint is kind of hard when I started getting into the dating world because... I would hide the fact that I'm on a podcast mm-hmm. because obviously motherfuckers right. are gonna come on here and just watch me talk yeah. and yap and know everything about me and they don't even right. haven't had a chance to go on a date with He's me. So yeah. mysterious. <laughs> no, I feel literally. like I don't know anything about you. Know. Literally, they they know everything about <laughs> me already. They watched the whole fucking show. Everything. Like I even took my link tree off of the from like besties and stuff mm-hmm. off my bio on Instagram for a minute when I was like dating because uh, I didn't want people to go on my profile and like click on it and be like, yeah. oh, what the fuck is this so it's 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 weird when yeah. you're dating and then your whole life is out there maybe think of like other like celebrities or just like just people other podcasters mm-hmm. other tiktokers whatever mm-hmm. like you're dating and then your whole life is out there you yeah know? obviously there's things we keep to ourselves yeah you know that are gonna be only our partners are gonna know but still like we do put a lot out there yeah. and i asked um my my man about that recently I like how he felt about it and he said it, it obviously he doesn't mind it like he mm-hmm. supports me doing what i love but at the same time he said it does feel strange though to know that things a lot of people know things about me that normally not everyone would have access to no. because of t- depending how open i am you know what i share and he respects it, but obviously, I, I putting myself in his shoes, you yeah, know, yeah, I kind of understand, you know, like, if he one day is telling me a story, and then I'm like, oh, well, like, the whole world knows that story already, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, <laughs> the whole world knows that story already, you know, but yeah. I was like, oh, that's, that's like, the, that's like an interesting, like, little thing, I didn't think about that. Mm-hmm. Well, that's kind of what happened in the documentary, like, the sisters were doing it together so much that the little sister when the older sister joined the cult she started posting like old videos so Mm -hmm. to make it seem normal because at first they didn't know really that she was in a cult they Mm -hmm. she was just like oh i'm really busy blah blah um and i guess their grandfather died and they called her and they're like hey you know like are you gonna come to the funeral and this the sister's like no i have covid like i can't go and their family's like i guess they were really close so they're like what do you what do you mean you're not gonna come like and they're like no no no, i just i can't so then that's when the parents kind of got worried and they flew to california and then they asked her like oh like you have to come and she was like no i need to ask and he's like well who do you need to ask permission to and the sister was like someone who's closer to god than you what the hell yeah and then that the parents say like that's when we knew that like she was like gone that like she was already so brainwashed and that's like to this day she's still like that i haven't finished oh, okay. the documentary but from the way they're implying it yes because the documentary she's not in it no she's oh. not in it but a lot of former members are in it and they knew her and they talked with her and like they were they joined it kind of when she joined it because oh. it was like this huge thing so then um that's like the first um, episode and then the second episode it's the same religion but it's older members mm. so like it's been like the religion's been there for kind of a long time oh wow but before it was with like um i guess the the two girls that are in it kind of were were in it when it when he first started it mm. they became like his like right hand man and all I that i think i like that this kind of opens <clears throat> up the conversation of what social media really does for people mm. besides like the financial aspect the kind of bigger search that human beings are on of purpose of Mm -hmm. just wanting to feel like they belong wanting Mm. to be a part of something wanting to feel like fulfilled and you know a lot of people think through social media that we're gonna find that and it it is fulfilling in a lot of ways and you know financially it's cool as well but a lot of people especially it's surprising to me because sometimes i'd like to think like oh if i just make it bigger like if i could just live off of this like i will feel good with mm-hmm. myself but then you hear stories like this of people that in a sense have already made it but yet they're still susceptible to like falling into cults and like abandoning their families and like yeah or people that just made it and still feel unhappy they're not yeah. content with their lives they still feel like something's missing and it's mm-hmm. like what do you guys think is what is missing for a lot of people i think it's just kind of 
grounding yourself back to reality of like this universe exists but so does this one and as much as you want to be part of that one you have to be part of the real world like Mm -hmm. you have to have meaning aside of what the internet is giving you yeah um because i think as someone yeah i don't she's a girl i don't know she kind of talks very specific like i can't even do her voice but she she says something where it's like you want to feel good about yourself by how many likes you get like how you look on social media but like half of you haven't read a book in like years and half of you don't know how to do your taxes and you don't know how to you know do all these simple tasks that it's like you're so drawn into this world that you have literally forgotten about the reality of what Mm. it really is Mm -hmm. and that's why i too feel like it's hard to create content like vlogging style at least for me because i'm like i really i know i wish i was recording all of this but i really do like to be present in like that we had like at my, the barbecue we just had like i noticed dilemma. we didn't take a, a single I fucking know, picture but i had such a good time photo. that's yeah. that's my dilemma too like i don't know if you had, like even when i went on my arizona trip not mm-hmm. one thing was posted like that's my thing too it's like i know there's potential for like the content we can post but i no me nace mm-hmm. like i don't feel like drawn to do that yeah like and yeah. it's and it's strange because like there's moments where i'm like i get hyped i'm like yeah i want to i want to but then there's other moments where i'm like i actually like like you said you like being present like not being on my phone like mm-hmm. I've, i feel like i've been grounding so much myself with my family and like the people that i care about and like i love and i feel like a big focus has definitely been my family and i'm just like dude like I don't, I used to, like, on Snapchat, remember Snapchat days, like, you'd have, I'd have, like, a million videos, I would record everything, I'd record (laughs) everything, yeah, yeah, I feel like that was everyone, you know, and, and now I'm just, like, dude, like, I don't, like, I'm just soaking it all in, and I'm just, like, ah, like, this is what feels good, you know, and I hate that we live in a society, like, the world runs off of money, we have to be productive, we have to, to survive, you know, Mm. so I get that that pressure adds on to, like, us feeling like we have to perform and do a lot of things for social media but like if we were talking about like the perfect world right where we didn't have to work everything was just for fun do you guys think we would film content or just like be be doing more like if we wouldn't have like that stress of that pressure of surviving do you think it would be a different vibe when it came to like social, social media? media um i think so because even how you said like snapchat you know, back then it wasn't posting to see how many people viewed your story. No, it was just, just like, like mm, look at what I'm doing. Everything. Now. Like, yeah. Just post everything. Like it was cool yeah. to post because you weren't posting with an expectation. You were just posting to kind of share yeah, that. Yeah. And I feel like that's what's been taken out of social media. Like yeah. you can't just post to enjoy things. You have to post to, I guess, get validation hey, in a sense. Come la foto. Huh? Primero como, primero como oh, la foto. Literally, my food eats first, bitch. I'm sorry. I mean, that my camera eats first. Like, I'm sorry. I love taking pictures of my yeah. food. Like, I really do. And I don't really post it, but it's one of those things where it's like, okay, I have all this content, but I like it because it's, it's for me. For me like, to look at. Look how cute mm. this fucking pancakes look. Honestly, I love fucking posting. <clears throat> I, I really, I feel like I'm, no, no, I'm, yeah. I'm such a, and it's okay. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. everyone's different. different. Yeah, of course. But I, I love, <clears throat> I love recording shit. Like, oh, yeah. mostly because I have a horrible memory. So it's like, oh shit! Like I'll look back, I'm like, oh my god! Or I'm like, dude, I went to this one place. I'm like, I know I took a fucking picture somewhere. I go on my locations, go on the spot, and I'll get it. Like literally, so I'm a, I'm a whore. It's for, like, so convenient. Like my best friend, I was texting her the other day. I'm suffering that I don't got IG right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, y'all can't see the amazing things that I'm doing all the time. It really does kill me because I really feel like in my head I'm as big as like I'm as big as my hair like that. As it, is, it should be that way. Yeah. love that for you guys. but it's so funny because i was texting my best friend the other day and i was asking her if she had a baby blue shirt i could borrow and she had a couple options and she was like hold up like let me send you pictures and she sent me pictures of every single outfit she's worn the tops in just so i can see and and then she, she then she told me oh i also have like these jackets i would look good with it and she sent me pictures on different occasions of her wearing the clothes wow. and i'm like dude you just have a picture for everything and she was like dude i literally have a picture in every single piece of clothes that i own Aww. like i everything everything and it's just like kind of reminds me of you where it's yeah. like you just she's the same and she's an aries too yeah. she's an aries queen she loves to take pictures of everything Everything. yeah everything everything and she posts everything too (laughs) and it's like i love it i love i wish i could do it i i take pictures and videos i just never post them yeah down yeah i i got i got a picture sending in my draft right now 
for waiting. <laughs> I'm like, y'all don't even know. But the thing is, I record a bunch of shit and I never do anything with it. That's that's <laughs> it too. Like I like I have so many videos of concerts that I'm like, why do I have these? Like I'm I don't never look at them and I'm clearly never gonna post them. Yeah. But when you do see me, I'm about to be like, no, nah, hold up. Like, oh just God, have to be <laughs> Did you know a video I come by a lot? Like when I'm going through my camera, the one I besame mucho at the Jesse and Joy, and I was crying, or was it like? Oh my god, I think it was. I can't remember who it was. I think Send it was, me that video. That shit's dude, funny. Dude, I was crying yeah. and she was recording it because her phone had as she was using mine. <laughs> and I was standing behind her crying and I, next thing you know, I look down and she's fucking recording me and I just see myself Aww. in the camera and I'm like, <laughs> dude, it was too <laughs> Wait, funny. I don't remember anymore, dude. Aww. I don't even remember if it was Rake or Jesse and Joy. I feel like it was Jesse Joy. I think it was Jesse and yeah. Joy. Oh, I think it was like. Oh, I don't know. Could have been Gore. I think it might have been Gore. Oh, wait. Yeah, I think it was. I yeah, think I think it, it was, was Gore. Um, and at the time, I was just really drunk in my yeah. feelings because it just brought me back to how I felt at the time when I heard that song a lot, like on repeat. Mm. And I was going through like my baby daddy like heartbreak and it was obviously like fucking terrible. Mm. And I was drunk off my ass. So just hearing that song live like it Damn. really touched me. I was yeah. like, Damn. it brought you back to a moment. It really did. It really took me back to like how I felt like abandoned. That shit was, was amazing, like, y'all. I'm sorry. Yeah, she, For me, it was nothing but joy. <laughs> yeah, she was. She was eating that shit up. I know, yeah. and I, I, Hans had let me borrow his phone, and he sent me the videos, and they're horrible. I don't know if it's just because of the quality, like in sending them. So yeah. I don't know if he still has them, but hopefully he does. Because awesome. I always think about it. I'm like, fuck. Like I've seen Jesse Joy, and I don't have a single fucking video of it. Yeah. Like that sucks. But that video is really funny. Send them. I'll send them to you. Send them to me, please, please. Send them. I'm dead, bitch. You're talking about, but I have so many videos in them for what I'm never gonna do anything with them. She but needs I to watch look at them. them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like I watch like my like I have a lot of videos of Juanes and I've seen them like five times and I'll always rewatch them because they just they make me feel so good. I love mm. concert videos. You know I love love. Do you guys think there's a time frame on saying I love you? There should be a time frame. I think or, do, there, you, I or think, do you think if you just feel it, just say I think it. there should be, but I don't think that there is. What do you think there what, should be? And what do you think it should be? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, there's lots of questions here. Who, who asked first? <laughs> <laughs> Me. Where was okay, what, was what, what, what was the... <laughs> if you think... Why do you think there should be a time frame? Because I think it's dangerous to fall in love immediately. Because I think mm -hmm. it blinds you. I think when you fall into something slowly you don't you're you don't have as um uh, you know your rose colored glasses aren't so like opaque uh -huh. whereas when you're if you're so blindly in love in the beginning it's like you're well you're gonna overlook all these red flags you're just like oh my yeah. god i love them so much they're so amazing yeah. they're so great they're doing it yeah and i feel like when it's slow you could be like hmm okay i kind of mm -hmm. don't like that that could be a potential you know yeah. like deterrent from yes. a relationship but like let me see it through you know and yeah. i feel like you kind of walk through it with more like caution caution so you feel like when you say i love you it starts like brainwashing you to like accept more because you're like i love you i love you like yeah because you you forgive things you overlook things for the people that you love like mm -hmm. there's certain people that they could do the shittiest thing but you're like but i love them but i love them mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. i just feel like that's worse when you include like a romantic love mm -hmm. you know? so what what do you think is an appropriate time to say i love you i feel like okay i love um, like, like five I love years them. i think, I think <laughs> i'm like mm, if you don't like five years, years you know <laughs> around five years you can start saying a whole it. lifetime actually <laughs> um okay love like i love you or i'm in love with you oh you think there's a difference yeah because you can love someone yeah. you can love someone you're like but you're not like oh i'm gonna spend the rest of my life with you but you're okay like, i love you like i love you and i could see a future okay but like i'm in love with you i could see a life with you that's two d very distinct things wow. someone someone can carry a future with you and you're like you can help me i could tell in this phase of my life mm -hmm. but i know that it, there's gonna be limits where it's like if i want to live a life with you you're like I'm going to build my life so that you're always in it. So you mm. always feel and, and consume me, you know? Oh, I love that. So I think there's a difference. Well, for both. <laughs> so I think to love yeah, someone, anyways. I feel like three months is like a good time to like love someone. And I feel okay. like to be... Having known them for three months or having... I feel like, yeah, we are in a Dated really, for three months. Whatever, whatever. I feel like three months should suffice. Asking for a friend. Probably the first... <laughs> Because <laughs> I feel like the first month you're probably seeing each other sporadically. The second month you're like, okay, we really like this person, so your frequency changes. So you're probably seeing them a couple times a week. 
And I think the third one's you're like, oh my God, I really feel like I love this person. Like, I really yeah. like them. I really spend all this time. Yeah. So you're probably seeing them throughout the week yeah. on, on weekends. You're spending later days with them. So I feel yeah. like three months, you've spent enough time where there's a foundation of who you think is this person. Yeah. And I feel like by six to nine months, like, yeah, I could feel like, oh, I can I love. Because then after those months, then it's the, all right, knowing my friends, knowing my family, knowing me and work. Then those are the, you know, three to six. So then it's like, all right, you've already kind of met these different parts of me. Um, you've already met these different parts of me, you know, and I feel like I can trust you and I want you in my life. So like now I love you. Mm, but like life, life is not like that, you know, sometimes, it, work like that. sometimes it is, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But because I, I like I said, I know one of my best friends, a long term relationship, one with leader, she's already in love with this person. Now they like share a whole life together. That's what I was going to say. I feel like you can know you're in love at any point. Yeah. I just think that, like you said, like I feel like waiting a certain amount of time is necessary because, like, literally what you said, like, I feel like you, it's like I love this person, but is this person who they say they are? So I kind of get, I have to give it time for them to prove themselves to me that mm-hmm. they're worthy of mm-hmm. me saying these things Definitely. to them. Right. Yeah, because I feel like that exact timeline is what happened to me. Like, I was mm-hmm. like, okay, well, but I already kind of knew him. So I already knew he was like a good person. But I was yeah. like, okay, well, let me confirm that you're a good person. Mm-hmm. And then we dated for like four months. And then. Who said I love you first? Well, because, be okay. Be so it was you. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was, no, because when he asked me out. He asked me out in December. Okay, it was over the three month threshold. <laughs> At that point, yeah, I had been. He asked me out in December, and I was like, "Oh no," because I don't want anything from this year. But I did tell him I was like, "You fall in love with me or something?" Oh. So he was, and he didn't say anything. So I already knew he loved me yeah. before he ever said it. Yeah. But we said it at the same time essentially because we weren't. Like, it was like a conversation. It wasn't more like it wasn't like a moment. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, like it was, a declaration of love. Yeah, it just... wasn't like oh, like he was looking at me and he was like. Yeah. No, it was just uh, more of like we were in conversation of it. Mm-hmm. And then we just kind of, I was like, okay, well, you love me. And he was like, yeah. And I was like, okay, well, I love you too. Oh, that's cute. To be fair, we were fighting. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're like, let me know right now. Yeah, literally kind of. I was like, um, sorry, I'm not going to fucking like waste my time right. here. Yeah. So it was kind of a, that situation. But mm-hmm. I think he declared it first yeah, in a yeah. sense. She's yeah. like, I said I love you too, not first. Yeah, I forced yeah. it out of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm not holding it. <laughs> I started a fight on purpose. <laughs> that was my goal. Yeah, but why do you feel like saying I love you, girl? Um, <laughs> tune in, not, tune not in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Just be honest. No, but I nobody's, know. Nobody knows. Nobody's you know, tune into the Patreon because I actually do have some tea Ooh. about this topic. Oh. So. I know. I feel like nobody... Uh, admits when they really fall in love though like yeah. I, people are always like it wasn't first. like six months like bitch no, it wasn't. Uh, you know, you know, ain't no way you, you were with this person know. for six months and you didn't fucking that's love them feel. That's, i swear that's my man and honestly like i just feel like me when i think about love i understand like the whole like reservations right like you should obviously know a person well mm-hmm. and you know they should be consistent in how they treat you and how they show up for you and show that they care and respect you um but it's like if i can meet like friends right and then like in a month be like you know hang out with them and like i love them like they're just a Mm -hmm. great person you just know and you can tell a friend i love you Mm -hmm. why i just in my brain it's like why is it any different with a man that is courting me you know that is like Mm -hmm. consistently showing up for me showing me that he cares in so many ways takes care of me and is very intentional with me and you know why why is it like why is there like Oh, why does there have to be like a hold back there? You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I get it. I, I do. I always say I do get it. But sometimes I wish it could just be like, like, like you said, maybe we're not necessarily in love, but to feel like love. Like, why do I have to gatekeep? I love you. <laughs> why don't I keep it to myself, bitch? I think it's just because you're giving more in a yeah. relationship. You know, like you're mm-hmm. not you're not just giving your emotions and your time like you're giving your body. Like yeah. you're giving so much more exactly. that already kind of giving that power to someone. Exactly. Even more is like, oh, shit. Like you already have a lot. And yeah. now I have to give you this too. like that's scary. But I love you. you yeah. feel like that's a lot to give. I think so, because I don't think everybody deserves it, even if you feel it, especially like mm-hmm. like I feel like I've seen my that's friends be in love and I'm like, <sighs> like. This person uh, did not deserve that from you and they didn't yeah. like it just wasn't mm. I would have wished for you to love yourself more in that scenario or to, to like hold back that kind of 
Because you kind of you're giving power to someone. Hold that, hold yeah. back that power from them, so they wouldn't yeah. have treated you like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that it's more sense. that. Yeah. That makes but sense. But I, I also think when it's someone that's you feel you know is reciprocal yeah. of everything yeah. that you give, I think there's also power in giving that love. Yeah, yeah. and I feel and it's one of those things where it's like, fuck, I have to be open for them to be open with me. Yeah. Like, exactly, that shit sucks. Exactly, it really you really do. It get sucks what if you it give. doesn't work out. But yeah, I think it, yeah. It, I think it's worth the ride, and it's just like think about it. How many things have we done that maybe we didn't enjoy? But it's like, okay, whatever. We got to experience them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And honestly, that too. I feel like one thing that I'm learning now about this time around dating and something that I feel like has changed when it comes to love is... Oh, speaking of love. Uh, <laughs> I'll take a picture, I'll take a picture for you guys. So you could post that. That um, is too cute. <laughs> I think something that I feel like is changing for me and my mindset when it comes to love is... I don't want my love to be conditional towards anyone. I just want to give it because that's what I'm embodying. Like, mm. that's kind of like something that I really want to embody and just like really be a part of who I am. I feel like in the past, definitely, like in my past relationship, I'd be like, well, if you don't do this for me, I'm not going to do it for you. Or if you don't, you know, it was always conditional on mm. what they gave me. And I always wondered, what if I would have just done it because I loved them without any expecting anything in return? How would that have affected my partner? You know, not in the sense of like, oh, I have to perform or I have to do for like for them to give me what I need. But mm. um, it's just in the sense like of I feel like naturally when you when it's genuine, when you do embody love and you just give it, I feel like you, you, you get it back. There's no way that you're not you don't get it back. You mm. know what I mean? So I feel like going into dating this time around, I'm. Not trying to think of it as like, oh, like, what am I going to get in return? It's just, this is just who I am. This is just how you make me feel. And I'm happy. And so I want to naturally, like, do these things for you. And I mm-hmm. feel these things for you. And, you know, I want to make you feel this way. So I'm going to just do it without attaching myself to a long future together. I'm just simply with you in this moment in time. And I'm enjoying it, whether it turns out to be for a couple years or a couple months or a lifetime. But... Mm-hmm. I'm enjoying it so now and I want to be like authentic with you and I want to be like loving with you and you know whatever I saw this quote like that's like after a breakup and it said like whatever love I gave you was yours to keep and I think that's so sweet because it's like you know in that moment it felt right and I'm not saying you know things could end but it's like if if it felt good in that moment why regret it or why be like oh you know I shouldn't have done that or whatever. Mm-hmm. so yeah i've just kind of been like you know i've just been wondering about like that like, you're better than me i literally was like you need to decide right now if this is forever because <laughs> i'm not gonna do this again I'm like, Damn, but i have feel, yeah i also feel like it comes from like me being scared yeah you know want to be in control the situation yeah well more so i was just like i feel like i'm always trying to convince myself that like it's like safe because I'm like, oh, my gosh, like someone promised, you know, in front of God and everybody I love that mm. they loved me and they were going to love me forever. And then they didn't. So I feel like it does kind of mess with my head a little bit mm. where I'm like, oh, yeah, OK, like you love me right now. Mm. Or are you going to love me like in once a year you truly get to know me and see me in my wholeness? So you yeah. still want to be with me. Yeah. But you never get to fully see everyone in their wholeness. And they're no, entirely- for sure. Yeah. And I and it's one of those things where like I have to. Kind of tell him, like, hey, you know, I'm having these thoughts. And then him be, like, reassuring to that. You don't mm-hmm. think so? You don't think you ever get to see someone in their wholeness? No, because, you I mean, not to use you for your example, but mm-hmm. to use her as an example. <laughs> <laughs> right? Just because I feel like you were with your former partner for eight years. Mm-hmm. You literally met them when they were a, a, a child mm-hmm. to becoming an adult, to becoming their own person. And then something entirely... T- t- incredibly like life altering happened to you and then that person became someone totally distinct mm-hmm. from the person who like you knew yeah so it's like did she really know him if if, if this is the person who became and, and caused him to slip you know it doesn't mean you didn't know him you know but yeah. it's just like i didn't i expected you or i thought you were going to be this person for me but you didn't show up so sometimes people change it's like yeah. me like i'm i i could truthfully say you know me, I, I'm not the same girl I was at 16 that I am at 26. I wasn't even this. De- oh, no, I mean, if you're now. well, if you're talking about like evolving, of course, you know, mm-hmm. you're gonna change, you're gonna grow. And but I feel like being with someone with a partner, I feel like it's important to always show up authentically as who you are oh, in yeah, every yeah, state, you're gonna know who they in are, every yeah, state yeah. of like when character. you're evolving, because obviously, like, it's important that's 
the person you're sharing a life with. So, mm -hmm. you know, I do believe there are people out there that hide parts of themselves, you know, mm -hmm. depending of like the levels of shame they have and, you know, embarrassment or whatever. But I do think it's to be known. I feel like holy to I feel like in the sense where I can be like dumb. I can be I can say the meanest things or my darkest thoughts mm -hmm. or show my ugliest sides. And because you know, obviously the good is the good everyone's gonna love the good but to be able to show the not so good to someone and for them to still like accept you and love you and want to be with you and like choose you at the end of the day mm -hmm. i think that's like the the like i don't know like, the yeah like the form true definition of love, like yeah, the biggest form of love really of being loved yeah because yeah. even like when you have insecurities you know like if i were like i can approach him and be like hey you know i'm having these thoughts and he can take it in million in a million mm -hmm. forms you know he can be either supportive or be neglective to it or kind mm -hmm. of make you feel stupid about you know there's a million ways that someone can approach it mm -hmm. so to be vulnerable in that way and for someone to still be like okay like this mm -hmm. is what you need let me give that to you because i love you like all those things it's it's hard to find a partner who is willing to take the time to kind of give that to you yeah mm -hmm. so it, it does feel not, like i it is a battle with me yeah. in my head of like okay he's really really nice and he's really being that because he's a nice person it's not he's not just making this up for mm -hmm. no reason yeah. and you know and you know what's something that i've learned in my past relationship that's definitely helping me now in this one is I'm definitely being mindful about who the person I'm dating is in the sense of looking at every every side no rose colored glasses like and because I know that person's doing the same for me you know I'm showing up as myself so it's like I I'm gonna say the dumb thing I'm gonna do the dumb thing like I'm gonna be who I am and if they accept me they're gonna accept me but something that I learned is like if someone I and not to like you know like talk shit but like you know I feel like if someone doesn't accept themselves in the sense of like like I had an ex who couldn't never felt like content in their work and it was always like a topic of something that he would beat himself up about constantly he just wasn't and even though he produced great work like it was always like there was always something wrong with mm -hmm. it and he just never felt content with it and I noticed that it would come out when it was like my work, he was very critical of my work too. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that also like was a big thing that hindered our relationship because he projected a lot of his own shit. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I, so something that I'm really being mindful of when I'm talking to someone is like how, how like, um, how much, what's the level of like acceptance they have of themselves and when they fuck up, when they, create work that maybe is not like their best or mm -hmm. how do they handle you know things like that because i feel like that's how they're gonna handle me whenever you know what i mean like that's, yeah. that's what they're gonna give me like i can't expect someone to be compassionate with me if they can't be compassionate with themselves you know mm -hmm. what i mean like it's like and i feel like it's easy to say like if someone's going through something to like say the words like oh like you know sympathize and say the right words but to actually feel it, I think, is completely different. And I feel like when you get comfortable with someone for years, it's like, yeah, in the beginning, they might have been able to say the right thing and sympathize with you because they were, like, trying to get you or they, it was, like, a year or two years in. But, like, 10 years down the line, I imagine it's going to come out of, like, that bitterness or, like, that non-acceptance. Like, eventually, like, they're going to get tired of you and just, like, they don't have that towards themselves. Like, what makes them... What is going to make them be able to have that towards me like years mm. on the line once they feel like there's, you know what I mean? Like there's no spark yeah. or there's no whatever. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, and those are like the, defi especially, you know, I know, you know, you've been in a really long relationship. Like it's, those are the moments that are really defining to the relationship of, okay, well, this, we're both in a really hard space and neither of us really have that to give to each other, but we still have to choose this partnership at the end of the day. And I feel like a lot of people don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. Which is valid. You know, everyone Things aguanta lo que options, quiere. Yeah. That's how I always saw it too. Like, I was like, pues no aguanta lo que quiere, yo no quiero aguantar. Like, yeah. that's why I'm leaving this relationship because, you know, we are eight years in and it's not that I'm not choosing you, it's just I have to choose me now. So mm -hmm. neither of us choose each other. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. he didn't want to change for me and I didn't want to change for him. Mm -hmm. And it was just, just like, there's really clicking. nothing to do at that point. Yeah. yeah. But I also feel like, like when I see you and Rex, like you guys are friends, which says yes. a lot. It's telling, I think, to relationships. Like when, when people are partner, like they're friendship partners. Yeah. It's not just like, oh, we're in a relationship. Like, can you laugh together? Can you guys like mm -hmm. fuck around together? Like, mm -hmm. and you know, be weird as fuck together. Have Cause if you can't, then 
you're never like you're literally in a yeah. weird fucking closeted relationship yeah. where you don't know me and i don't really know yeah. you my yeah. aunt was telling me that too the other day you know she was like you know your uncle and i we've almost gotten divorced twice and she said but we never did we always come back and she said one of the biggest factors i think in that is because we're literally like best friends she's like we laugh together we have a lot of fun together and that's like what's pulled us through like the hard times mm -hmm. and she was like we still like plan dates and we go out together alone and we have fun like without the kids and i was like damn that's so true like at the end of the day i feel like you know a good like laugh can make like a lot of bad things like obviously mm -hmm. depending on like, what the bad thing is but like a good laugh can sometimes just help you like just get over like the bad thing and yeah. if you don't have that with someone like that friendship i can see why like it would like sizzle out like really fast yeah. and i do agree I, every time i see you and rex like you guys do seem like best friends and i think that's really sweet like i would i would want like a marriage like that like where i feel like my partner is my best friend yeah I mean, that's the goal, I think. That's the goal. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. For everyone. Yeah, <laughs> or literally, you know, like when people, like in the office, he's like, oh, when Pam's saying like, oh, my kids, you know, when you're a kid, you, you think your parents are soulmates. Like, oh, my kids are going to be right about that. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Too so bad I'm not having kids. I remember that. And oh, my God. Dogs. Talking about having kids. <laughs> oh, my gosh, you guys. I'm on the IUD. So... I, and you guys know me, my stance on having more children. I feel like I've been very vocal about if I don't have any more children, like I will be okay with not having children like mm -hmm. at all. And um, I was having a conversation with my aunt the other day because I was holding my nephew and he's like seven months old and he was so cute. And this happened like on what, like Friday? And I was holding him and he fell asleep on me. Aww. And I, I just love babies fall asleep on me. I just feel like such a good, like, mother. <laughs> and, I'm a mother. Yeah, I'm a mother. And, um, and literally fell asleep on me. And I was, my aunt was sitting next to me. And I was like, the, I was like, I'm getting like really bad baby fever. And she was like, well, yeah, like the baby's cute, whatever. And I was like, no, like, I've been getting like really bad baby fever, like, oh my God. for like a week now. I've been thinking about a baby, which is insane because. Obviously, I'm no, I'm not like in a position. I'm not even married. And I told her I was like, I'm not having a kid unless I'm married. Like, I need to be locked in. I was like, I already had a baby with a kid that I thought I was with. Oh, seven years. So like, we're good. And then look at us. So I was mm -hmm. like, no, like I need some like real commitment. I was like, but just the fact that I even want to have a baby is insane because I hadn't felt like that. I hadn't wanted that. And my aunt was telling me that she feels like it has to do because like I'm dating someone that's making me feel safe in like every mm -hmm. area and like secure mm -hmm. and she was just saying like maybe that's what it is like maybe when a man like comes into your life and he does that for you it's kind of like i don't know like your brain is just kind of like you're over let me, start going let nuts. me give you baby nah <laughs> no literally so i'm just like bro i was like i don't know but it needs to stop fuck no don't have nobody's baby anymore if you guys aren't married yeah that is the most ridiculous even thing me in the world. I, I tell that to everyone i'm like you know you have to Gotta get that ring. Let Gotta me see. Do you don't wear a ring? No, I don't wear a ring. My nails. Why? Do you a have body. a ring? I do have a ring. Yeah. Have wear? I asked you this before? Uh, I think so. Okay. Why don't you wear it? Sorry, guys. Uh, My bad. I don't, no, no, no. I, we, I don't know. Brian doesn't wear a ring, or Rex doesn't wear a ring either. I ha he has a ring. I got it for him. Oh, okay. So yeah, you just, just, it's just, just not really, it. like, whatever. Yeah, it's whatever. I mean, you guys seem like, I know you guys, like, claim each other, like, proudly anyway. Like, I know you guys are, like, mm -hmm. super faithful all about each other. So I guess, in hindsight, it really doesn't matter, but. It's surprising because yeah. you're the first couple that like I met that doesn't wear that doesn't wear wedding rings. Yeah, at least yeah, I could, I, I don't I really know met that many rings. married people either. Like friend, <laughs> friends, at least you know. Yeah, but no. all my all of my friends that are married do wear their rings. Yeah, um, I don't know. We just don't. We just never did. You're like I'm waiting on that. I just thing. feel like too, we probably <laughs> got married during COVID, so it's like where the hell was I wearing my ring to? Like my shower. Oh, I was just gonna get used to it. So I, mm -hmm. like yeah, like and I was engaged for only one month. Yeah. Get it. And then we got married the next month. And also, too, I feel like you're such a maximalist. Like, your your jewelry and everything, I feel like I imagine it wouldn't go right all the time. And so it's, you would take it's it silver. It's cute. But I think now I'm like, I should ask for a gold ring. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> no, but it's like, not too it late, trendy. mama. It's it was too trendy late. at that time. Like, yeah. I think every, that was, everyone thought it was more classic. But I'm like, I don't really wear silver like that. But I guess it doesn't matter. It's your wedding ring. For an anniversary or like a, you never do your vows one day. Yeah. Do you wear it to like special events? Or like on special Probably days? We're like two, three times a year. Oh, like okay. our anniversary, <laughs> Valentine's <laughs> Day, and then I'll throw it on like sometimes randomly. Like maybe like every St. quarter. St. Patrick's Day. Oh. Yeah, like every <laughs> quarter I'll wear it. It's because you know what? We have them like in my jewelry thing. And although I have my jewelry there, I bought this whole jewelry organizer just so I could put my jewelry. But now because I'm traveling so much, it's everywhere mm. that I don't even open that shit. 
You so it's like it. literally when we leave, I'll have it. But even like my rings and all that stuff, I don't even have it in there. Mm. Or at least not the ones I use regularly. I need to go pawn my old my old ring. You decided? Please yeah. tell me what you should buy. we go do a, a pawn Ooh, divorce party? We should do a, party. a pawn divorce party. Come with us to pawn. Pawn divorce. I'm all crying. No, yeah. I'm kidding. And then, like, we're gonna go shopping. <laughs> like what is she gonna buy? A hey, bird. A bag. You'll get your Mary Kate. Oh my god, you're right. I could, or I could buy shoes. You're right. My mm-hmm. shoes, my I shoes. really love your shoes, by that the way. Shoes. These? They're so cute. Thank you. They're I've been so wearing cute. heels more often. Yeah. Um, just because. Yeah, I saw the mom from Wizards of Waverly Place. Um, you know which one? Yeah, I know oh, exactly. Alex about. She's fine. Mom. Yeah, she oh. was talking about her mom, like in her real mom, um, <laughs> where she was saying that when her mom would get ready that she would just watch her and she would just take so much joy in watching her mom like be like girly and stuff that it made her always want to dress up and always want to be in heels and i was like i always want to be in heels but i always feel kind of like weird about it but i don't no, want to do that anymore like no. i feel girl. like these legs are too they're too good to not and be this is our prime yeah. like why we're not gonna be able to be rocking heels every day yeah, when we're yeah, 50 like we're gonna be tired <laughs> but our knees are gonna be cackling girl wear them now <laughs> like, oh, wear sorry. them right now that's my left knee no literally please wear them right now and i love wearing heels to be honest I, like that's why that's why for work i love when I like, I don't care. I love getting ready for work, and it's love it. and because I work for other people, like I love when they come. Like, oh my god, I says every time I see you, you look so nice. Oh really? Thank you. You're so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love when they tell me, and they're like, Oh my god, where do you get your sound? Like my mom. Yeah. Aww. Literally, because they're like, yeah. Oh, uh, they're like, oh, Okay, you know what? I can. You know, actually, I can see it's a little bit retro. I'm like, oh, that oh. vintage. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I feel like I. I love getting ready, like, everywhere. Yeah. I mean, it's obvious now. I feel like he has known me for a long time. Like, I just yeah. love getting ready. Yeah. But heels change an outfit, too. So, Jill, like, heels make an outfit. I actually was yeah. going to wear different shoes, but I'm like, they're not going to be on camera. And of course, this bitch had to point out her fucking... Oh, no, we don't have that third camera today. No, we don't. Oh. <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> she <laughs> actually is wearing heels yeah. right now. Yeah. Hey. They're the okay. Croc heels. I'm wearing yeah. my cowgirl boots. I'm wearing my cowgirl They're boots. They're Balenciaga Crocs. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Remember those? They had the fucking heel on them. Oh. Terrible. Hey. If you know, you know. Terrible. terrible I always terrible. wanted some just for shits and giggles. You know what I do love though? I love Skechers. I'm gonna buy some. The Skechers. They're heels? stepping up their design game. No, 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 no. just Skechers. Oh. Just like the sneakers. <laughs> no, they're stepping up their design. Well, don't they they're steal so them from cute. Nike? They're I just don't Skechers. know. They, they keep stealing them, babe. They get sued like yeah. every year, but they literally don't yeah. care. They're like, yeah, well, yeah. They're, they're like, fuck the it. Fine. Mm-hmm. I would too. No, but I want the old classic black ones. Have you guys seen my pink ones? Yeah. Like those, but black. Oh, okay. Why? Because I don't know. They're comfy? They, they are very comfy, and I don't know. They just, like, literally make me feel like a little girl, and Aww. I just, like, love wearing and them. You, yeah, I wish they little. fucking lit up and shit. Oh. <laughs> just buy some fucking light-ups. No, because the light-up ones, like, from the ones from the mall are stupid. They look ugly, and I don't oh. know if they make adult light-up ones. I would say, well, because they're for children. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, um, they're probably not grown, for I'm going to sure. dress up like JoJo Siwa, like, just... Oh, hell no. That bitch, that bitch creeps me out. I'm like, oh, she's weird she was weird even before she got weird like bitch why is your face all over your car that was always weird to me she has probably some narcissistic and her voice i'm sorry what the fuck is that (laughs) jojo yeah she's a low-key smoker she speaks like a 80 year old chain smoker her like manic episodes are too funny though i'm sorry i like them like she's just been going nuts on on the internet oh i just always thought she was nuts Cause she released a song a while ago, and it's called Karma. And she was like, "Yeah, when I was writing Karma, like blah blah blah, I didn't want to come out as a bad girl yet, and blah blah blah." But then oh it turned God. out that it's somebody else's song. No. And so that per so TikTok blew up that person's Karma version. No. Um, and she's just been like really weird, like dancing weird on like on TikTok and like posting really weird. Kind of, did you guys ever know like um, Gabby some shit? Oh yeah, Gabby. Who, Gabby what? Gabby. Gets- she used to be Hannah, Gabby ha- Hannah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her. Oh, that girl. Kind dude, of like manic episodes are crazy. Yeah, so kind of like that was what There's JoJo was doing. Guy in her dude. House. Yeah, I remember when all that shit was going down. I was like, "Whoa!" I was eating. I should have had my popcorn. I was like, "That's Ooh. how I feel." Austin McBroom too. Like they're all in some dude. weird shit. Like Imagine what is them, that's gonna be us in two years, guys? Hey, <laughs> let's not about that shit. We're gonna get oh. so big that we. <laughs> We're gonna start tweaking on the internet. I'm gonna just be ready to get big. I'm gonna stop there. But hey, on our audience, 
I'm like, look, I need to get bigger as this ass for real. Hey, donate, subscribe to their Patreon so we can get our numbers up and then we can BBL really, accusations so coming we very be in soon. Our BBL, era. BBL like this. Oh, All right, guys. Well, we wait, wait, wait. Before we wrap it up, I do want to congratulate all Mexicans out there because in the first time in two hundred years, Mexico has its first female elected Woo! woman, President Claudia. I think it's like Sh- shout out to the Jews. Shame bomb. Shame bomb. Shame bomb. Shout out to the Jews. Shout out. She is Jewish. Um, in terms of her ethnicity, ethnicity. yeah. Her grandparents fled. Um, Nazi Germany. So yes, but I don't. They say that they, she doesn't say much about her like religion, but regardless, she's Mexican. And have you done any research question. on her? I did listen to a ten, mi- ten minute CNN. She's actually a climate scientist. Ooh, yeah, she's a PR. Yeah. and she was a, a former um, mayor for the city of Mexico. Ooh, okay, good for her. Yeah, so it seems like she's um, practicing what she's doing. Out. I was hoping to get an update from Shout the Mexicans, out to all the but Jews. <laughs> you know, I this is what I have heard her. So it's good that she believes in climate change, but I think she, her biggest priority, she says, is to be tackling against uh, narco cartels because. The former president or the current sitting president, um, I guess his policy was hugs, hugs, not guns. And so obviously that's not been fruitful for the been. Mexican it's not been working out, babes. government. And so mm-hmm. her number one priority is um, reducing crime and mm-hmm. reducing the power of cartel. So good luck to her. She's probably going to like s- take the blueprint from what El Salvador is doing. Lock him up. No. In words of Trump, lock him up. Like he's getting locked up. All 34 <laughs> counts guilty. That's, That's what people are saying. Insane. They're like, Mexico gets a PhD fucking science, climate change scientist, and we have like Trump and Biden. Right. That's crazy. Demen- Dementia Dolly and felon. And convicted <laughs> felon. Um, Trump. So we're fucked. But I still implore you guys to vote. What a treat. When is it? When is, when do we, when is voting? November 4th. November 4th, guys. Go out and vote. Yeah. I'm going to do a new segment. Actually, I want to do a segment on why you should vote. Oh, you should. Yeah, I'm going to do a new segment. Are you going to enforce someone? Uh, am I going to vote for somebody? Enforce? Like, are you going to, like... Like, have my friends vote? Like, are you going to have, like... Are you going to share who you're voting for? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm voting for Biden. I mean, oh. I'm... Out of uh, the two, you're, like, convicted felon. I'm, like, I don't think there's a choice. Like, it's a two-party Dementia, system. old man. Yeah, and, like, mm. what? Again... Stay tuned for my segment. I'm going to start doing a segment why you guys should vote. And it's not going to be because I'm in favor of Biden or I'm in favor of Trump, but I'm in favor of democracy and our rights as citizens and how we should protect those who are, you know, undocumented as well. And therefore, I think that voting is the best way that I could be an activist. I'm going to just copy your, your sheet. Yeah, my sheet. Yeah, 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 yeah I got you. Send Let's me a picture. my family ask for. Send me a picture <laughs> and fill it out. Yeah. But on that note, besties, congratulations again to the president of Mexico. It's an I think it's amazing to have a woman Dream. be the lead. Yeah. You know. Dream big, besties. It's such a um, Machismo, sexist yeah, yeah. country, too. Yeah. 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 Yes. Actually, I heard both candidates were women. So oh, people yeah. knew that it was going to be a woman regardless. Yeah. Like, oh, good. So that's amazing. I think that's awesome. Honduras yeah. did elect their first female president. As well. Oh, wow. Well, that was before, but they re- just recently. What's up ahead? Like, What's we, up ahead? They're like, um, we did it first. Uh, uh, <laughs> one ahead, 30 back. Anyways, guys, <laughs> on that note, thank you so much, besties, for watching. Comment down below. What do you guys think about the first president? What cult would you join? Cult Stephanie, cult Isis, lowercase, cult Vanessa. Let us know. <laughs> <Lower case. laughs> and don't forget to log into our Patreon and get mm-hmm. some tips, vlogs. I did a little clip of my hair, so we can insert that or insert a little bit of our vlog. Like, what did you guys miss? I'm going to make them do some homework. So, like, share, subscribe, comment, subscribe. Uh-huh. Send this video to someone you think would enjoy it. Um, before we go, though, I do want to share my movie recommendation of the week. Yay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to recommend something light, something summary, because I feel like my last film was a little more intense. Mm-hmm. So this week I want you guys to watch Palm Springs. Have you guys seen it? No. no. Oh my gosh. It is hilarious. It it's is? with Andy Samberg. Yeah. 10 out of 10. It's a rom-com, okay. but it's really, really funny. It's literally Ooh. takes place in Palm Springs and it's a, a time loop movie. Oh. oh, I think I might've seen it actually. Yeah. It's really, really funny. It's like one of those feel good movies. If you feel like you're Were you high when down. you saw this? No. 
Okay. But it's very, very good. <laughs> Go ahead and watch it. <laughs> because sometimes when you're not high, it's not as funny. No, it's funny. Like, it's a funny, funny movie. 10 okay. out of 10. Um, <laughs> I'm only recommending 10 out of 10 for y'all. But yeah. leave a comment if you've seen it. And if you watch it, please let me know what you guys think. I love you guys so much. You can find me at Steph Scott Milk on all platforms. All things ISIS, three L's, because I'm not taking another loss. And bloomingvc.vic. And also, guys, comment um, if you have any new at ideas for me. I want to change my at on, and I want to have the same one on all my platforms. So help me come up with a name. Mm. Comment down below. What do you think would be a good at name? Winner gets their comment. Pinned. Winner gets a episode. You get to come on. Hey. Winner gets a follow back. Uh, oh. yeah. <laughs> no, I really will. And uh, we can like have a combo over the phone or something. Hey. So let me know. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching so much, besties. Love you. Bye. Bye.